Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to play the smooth sound of 80s yacht rock. That's artists like Michael McDonald and Christopher Cross. These guys worked with guitar players like Larry Carlton, Lee Rittner, Steve Lukather and more. Let's start by learning how those players created rhythm parts. So the first rhythm part is just a two note groove on the G string. It's an E to a D. And that's a really, really common thing in the 80s soul and yacht rock genres. But you've got to be really careful for a couple of things here. First off, the timing has to be absolutely perfect on here. The idea is that you're trying to not get in the way of the other instruments, but lock in with things like the snare and the hi-hat. And it's harder than it looks. And you also have to get a really light palm mute on the bridge with the, with the picking hand. Very light. You're not trying to kill the string, but you don't want this to ring out too much either. And the next lick is a classic soul idea in fourths and a third. So that's a slide from the 12th fret of the B and E strings with the first finger. So intervals of fourths there. And then the 12th fret of the G and B strings with the third finger. And then there's just this really quick lick, which is a slide down from fret 19 on the B string. This is a real wah wah Watson type idea, but you've got to mute the string first and then fret on the 19th fret of the E string, and then slide down like this. And again, that's got to be really perfectly timed. You'll get the most out of this lesson if you work with my backing track and tab. You can find those on Patreon, along with plenty more lessons for a small monthly fee. Come and join me there. Link is in the description below. Here's the next rhythm part broken down. Next, we play the rhythm groove again. And then we follow it with this soul lick, which is intervals of thirds sliding down. Now I'm going to show you how to create a rhythm part for a verse section. Here's the main verse groove. Again, there aren't many notes, but it's all about where you place them within the beat and how you lock in with the snare or the hi-hat. But again, it's all about the timing. It's about that light palm mute on the D and G strings. and then releasing the palm mute for that sliding lick at the end. You can also add a bit more expression to these kind of parts with slight bends on the G string. When you're creating these parts, you don't have to play too much. You're really looking for maybe two or four notes as the, most of that lick is. And the chords we're playing over are just a C major to an E minor. So those kind of parts can be created from the E minor pentatonic scale. I'm playing out of this shape here. So I take that block of four notes and then I just give the lick a rhythm. And the second time around, we start off with the same lick. But end with this phrase. And that's just a B minor triad played over the E minor chord. 
So that gives us the fifth of E, the flat seventh D, and the ninth F sharp. Another feature of this style is doubling keys parts on guitar like this. Here's the keys part, double on guitar. It's just really an E minor chord. Here's an E and a G to a D major, D and F sharp. And again, that's all about locking in with what the keys are doing and making sure you're not stepping on any of the other instruments. When session players soloed on these tracks, they often had just four or eight bars to create the solo. And saying everything in that space of time is challenging. When you're working with my backing track, try to write solos rather than just improvising. And approach your solo like a mini composition focusing on melody and chord tones. I double track the solo on the recording to get a more authentic 80s sound. Here's the first part of the solo played slowly. So the solo is only over two chords again, the C major and the E minor. So I open up with this phrase, a B minor triad played over the E minor chord. And then the next part of the phrase is just using the E natural minor scale up here. And the E minor pentatonic. And it sounds like this. The next lick is pure Steve Lukather. The next part of the solo features something called the Lukather Bend, and we're gonna bend up on fret 17 of string one, a full tone. We hold the bend in place, and then use the fourth finger to fret the note you've bent up to. Check out the solo from Toto's Rosanna, where he does that. You can do it on the first, second, or even the third strings normally. Here's the lick. And again. You don't have to use complex scales here. You'll usually find everything you need in the minor pentatonic or natural minor scales, as long as you think melodically and aim for the chord tones. The next part of the solo is from the E minor pentatonic scale. But I'm gonna try and be really melodic with the idea. And the main focus there is to target the chord tones of the, of the E minor chord, the E, the G, and the B. You can also play great licks with arpeggios, and for this, we turn to Larry Carlton. The last part of the solo is inspired by Larry Carlton, so we're playing over an E minor chord or an E minor seven, but we're gonna play a G major triad over the top of that. And that's called triad superimposition because the G major triad gives us a B, which is the fifth of E, the D, which is the flat seventh, the G, which is the minor third, and again, the B at the top, the fifth. And then here's the lick. So we go from that G major triad into this position of the E minor pentatonic scale. And you can also see that as being the E natural minor scale played here.
And the last thing we do is target that root note of the, of the C chord underneath. So we're playing fret eight of string six here. And that's how we close the solo. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to hit subscribe, check out my guitar books on Amazon Worldwide, and join me over on Patreon. See you again soon.